Hello, I'm Gigi the Reader, and today I will be doing a review on Two Dark Rain. This book is a sequel to Two Dark Thrones, and I would like to start off with... I'm sorry, hold on, we're being interrupted. Probably my co-narrator is interrupting or being late again. Hold on one second. Hold on just a minute. guess we're gonna do the Queen of Hearts it was a good book okay so we're gonna start off I was wondering why Queen of Hearts was up there the first time but anyway okay so here we go with the Queen of Hearts let me start off by saying that I was intrigued when I picked up the book I was intrigued to know what led up to the Queen of Hearts becoming the Queen becoming the Queen of Hearts it's a, a prequel sort of a prequel on how she became the queen, how the queen of hearts became the queen. Before she was a queen, she was the princess. So I'll just start out the gate. I have to give this book a four out of five stars before I even get to the end of the review. So there's a good build up, but after at the end, you can feel the plot taking a weird turn. I have to point out that I feel the author Colleen Oaks made a prejudiced analogy of black people in my opinion I can say that she wrote a slightly racist in the window of blacks in the first chapter of the book that I'll address and quote word for word later but for now what you say what did you say did you read it? we haven't we got to that part yet we'll get to no, that part yet no you said, well, what was the word you used slightly racist in the window I mean, we get to the part about the spade. Yeah, remember what she said about spade? No, okay. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Okay, okay. Get to the part where she talked, she talked about spades. It sounds like some spades to me. Hmm. All right, then. Okay, Gigi the Reader. All right. Okay, I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you go ahead and quote it. You go ahead and finish it. Okay, thank you. Continue. Okay, on. Okay, so Miss Colleen Oaks is the author. Okay, so maybe we should go ahead and address the hidden racism in the book. So let me read a quote from the first from the book first off. Overall, I like the book, but in the first chapter, the author is describing the King of Hearts guards. They are a division of hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. I don't know if some people are aware, but a long time ago, in another era, racist white folks referred to black people here in America as spades. There seems to be a, a differential as she's describing each category of soldiers or guards, the uh, King of Hearts guards, four types. We have, we have the spades, the clubs, the diamonds, and the hearts. 
Here's the description as it starts off. There's a division, quote, there's a division of men called guards, each serving their purpose in the kingdom. Heart cards, handsome and skilled men, uniformed in red and white, protected the royal family and the palace. Club guards dressed in gray were in, were in charge of administering justice. They punished criminals and murderers and organized execution day. Their most important function was running the black towers. Diamond cards clad in vibrant purple cloaks protected and managed the treasury and sought to increase the king's resources. And then there were the spades. Spades were the warriors, those in charge of fighting and pillaging. The spades scared Dina. Cloaked in black, they were hard, grizzled men with dangerous pasts. They were viewed as untrustworthy, brutal, and, and bloodthirsty. If criminals were reformed and pledged their loyalty, they were allowed to join the, the spades. That is, if they didn't die in the Black Towers first. So, she's letting us know some of them were recruited criminals straight out, out of prison. Some of the spades were. Only the spades were recruited out of all the guards was the spades was with criminals so to quote go on to quote more it says quote the spades were universally loathed and feared across wonderland her father held a firm hand over them he was the first king to overpower them with his iron fist he was he had executed their strongest leaders and subdued their wildness the spades sim simmered quietly like a burning ember that could ignite and spread over the entire city. Unquote. Oh wow. Well that sounds a bit familiar. He executed the strongest leaders. Hmm. Okay, for now, let's talk about the main character, Dina, the, the young princess who was not yet the queen. She is age 16 at the beginning of the story. Her mother has passed that way 10 years prior to the story. She is not close to her father, the king. He is very distant with her, and they do not have a good or close relationship. She is closest to us, the, her servants, Harris and Emily. Harris is more of a father to her than the king. She is the next in line to the throne. Her younger brother, Charles, would be the next in line, except although physically healthy, Charles is mentally impaired. He has his own room and caretakers in the castle, and Dina visits him often. When their mother died, Charles seemed to have slipped into his own world and only spoke in riddles. The last thing he remembered about his mother is that she enjoyed her tea parties and adored her decorative hats that she wore to her tea parties. So Charles took up the hobby of making hats. He became very talented at it. He spent hours designing and making hats from his room. His hats were popular among the people in the kingdom. When there was, was a celebration in the kingdom, Charles would toss down his hats to the crowd from his balcony that passed, that passed by. Dina affectionately referred to her brother as the Mad Hatter. Although Dina was always uncomfortable with the duty of having to attend royal dinners, celebrations, and meetings, her father would barely acknowledge her presence, even though it was mandatory that she be there. Ironically, at one royal dinners of the royal dinners, the King of Hearts 
had an odd and shocking announcement. He announced that he had another daughter. He admitted to his royal subjects that during a battle with the people of Tory Mountains outside the kingdom, he was away in the battle for over six months. Because he was away from his queen for so long, he had had an affair with a woman. That affair produced a child, a girl named Vittori. She's two years younger than Dina. As the book describes, she was much prettier than Dina. She was. She has blue eyes, waist length, and blonde hair and porcelain skin. She was suddenly brought to the king because she had just become an orphan because her mother suddenly passed away. The girl was only two years younger than Dina at the time, which would make her 14 years old. Dina was 16. Right away, the king showed his favoritism over Victoria than for Dina. He officially announced her as to his royal subjects as his daughter and gave her an official title of duchess. He already didn't like Dina, but because he knew by birth right, Dina was next in line to inherit the throne. He wanted the throne to go to his son Charles, but of course Charles was mentally ill, so it was Dina who would take the throne on her 18th birthday. Even though the king didn't like his daughter Dina, he still expected her to show up at all the royal functions and duties as princess, attending all of the dinners and, and lunches. At one particular dinner she had to endure, something weird happened. A servant whom she wasn't familiar with was helping serve food. The servant placed a berry dessert in front of her. Then the servant rushed off. When she stuck a fork into the dessert, she noticed a small metal vial inside it. She didn't know what to make of it. At first she thought it was a plot to poison her, but she opened the vial and inside was a small piece of rolled up paper. The paper had a message written on it. It said, Go see Fina Baker in the Black Tower. Dina didn't know what to make of this small message. Don't do it, Dina. Don't do it. I'll do it. I'll leave that alone. A vial in What did it say again? What happened? What had happened then? Said a message. She found a vial, a vial, vial in her soup yeah. or in her dessert. Yeah. And she opened it up and it says, "Go to the see Fiona, Fiona Baker, the Black Towers." Yeah. Leave it alone, girl. Leave it alone. Take it. No, I wouldn't mess with that. Stay away from the Black Towers. It's not like a set. No, she got to she got to investigate. What do you mean she got to investigate? Listen, Dina, leave that alone. That's a setup. Leave it alone. Mm -mm, it wouldn't be me. She can go if she wants to. But okay, continue on. I don't know about that, so I leave that alone. Hmm. Sound like a setup to me, Gigi Dorita. Well. Okay. We'll see. Okay, later that day, she went to the stables and showed it to her boyfriend, Wardley. She was intrigued with the with the note. She wanted to know who this Fiona person was, but she knew she was forbidden to go to the Black Towers because she was the princess. There were three Black Towers. The Black Towers were, out, were outside the kingdom and were used as a prison to house criminals of the kingdom. A lot of them were on death row and would be killed by guillotine on the palace grounds, an execution that would be held on the castle grounds once a year. The rest of the towers held mental patients. It was a terrible place. A lot of the pris prisoners were, who weren't mental were tortured until they were nearly lost their minds. There were tunnels under the castle that led to the towers. Determined to find out who Fiona Baker was and what she wanted with her, she talked Warley into helping her sneak into the towers to find her. Even though he was against it, Dina finally talked Warley into helping her sneak into the Black Towers. Because he's a royal guard, he pretends he's bringing a prisoner into the towers and Dina dis disguises herself as his prisoner. So they sneak into the Black Towers, talk to some guards, and ask about this Fiona Baker. The prison guards don't recognize, don't recognize Dina. And in order to find out Fiona Baker's cell, Wortley tells the guard that Dina is to share a cell with Fiona. The jailer takes Wortley and Dina to her cell. What they find is a crazed woman who looks as if she's been tortured and lost her mind, mostly from living in solitude. When Dina asks her what she wants and why she meshes her, it's clear that Fiona is mentally distraught and doesn't seem to have all her faculties. She answers Dina in riddles. It seems like she's trying to tell her something about Victoria, the king's 
bastard child, Dina's half sister. She says, she's not who you think she is. She is a good girl. She be merciful, please. The one you call Duchess. So remember, Victoria was named the Duchess of the Kingdom. Dina asks her, please not to speak in riddles. Fiona continues, have you seen my baby? She was here once inside of me. She will find her death under the heart, trampled under the devil steed, just like me. So Dina came away confused. She doesn't understand fully what Fiona is trying to tell her. Wardley tells Dina she's mad. Dina asked her, how did you get here? Fiona keeps speaking in riddles. She sees that she can't get anything else out of her. Wardley warns Dina, it's time to leave right now. We have to go. And so they go. They go. They leave Dina and go back to the same way they came, sneaking back through the tunnels and up into the castle. So now they are led to think that Fiona might be Victoria's mother. She didn't die like the king said. Anyway, a few days later, oddly enough, Victoria comes to Dina and asks if she would, could please come to her room for tea, a private tea party. Even though Dina detests Victoria, Victoria wants desperately to be friends with Dina. Dina accepts her invitation. Besides, she wants to ask Dina some questions. So while at their tea party meeting, Dina comes straight out and says, Do you know a woman named, who goes by the name Fiona Baker? When Victoria heard that name, she choked and spit up her tea. Although she had had a strange reaction to the name, she denied ever that she ever heard the name before. Then she replied, It's sad. I pray for those in prison in the Black Towers, especially women. But Dina never mentioned the Black Towers or that Fina was imprisoned there. <laughs> then Dina asked her where she was born and where she grew up. She said she was born in a twisted wood at the base of the Yorkie Mountains. She said her father met her mother at, the, at their village and she only said that by the time she was brought to the castle at 14, her mother was long dead. Outside of that, she told Dina that sh she appreciated living in the castle and visited Charles often. Dina was shocked that Charles' caretakers never mentioned that Victoria had visited him. With that, their conversation ended. After that day, Dina realized she was no longer closest to the truth about Fiona Baker, except that Victoria was connected to her somehow. Moving on to the next chapter, I mentioned earlier that the kingdom held execution day once a year. When all the prisoners in the Black Towers were sentenced to death, 14 prisoners were lined up to be executed on execution day. Nine men and five women. As she was standing waiting for execution to begin, Dina vowed to, to herself that when she was crowned queen, she'd have to, the Black Towers torn down and rid the kingdom an execution day. There would be no more executions under her rule. Dina hated this day, but she had to attend. It was a mandatory obligation. Victoria even had to attend. Her father, the king, seems to be excited and reveled in the sight of the cheering crowd and subjects as the prisoners were lined up to face their executioners and guillotines. Slowly, prisoner by after prisoner was beheaded when finally there that the familiar face is dragged to the chopping block by the king's guards. It's Fiona Baker. When she was brought to the guillotine, Dina's father looked at Dina and had a smirk on his face. It was then that Dina realized he knew that she had been to the Black Towers and visited Dina there. Another strange thing happened as if things couldn't get any stranger. Just as Fiona's head was lopped off, Victoria fainted dead away and fell face first into the mud. Everyone was shocked and her two maid servants just stood over her screaming. Dina did help her by rolling her over and slapping her face to startle the doctors away. When Victoria came to, she muttered, muttered to Dina, Dina, he promised, he promised, I will wear the crown to keep her head. Then she fainted out cold again. That was the first time the king looked disappointed with Victoria. He n normally doted over her. <laughs> now you know, you, 
You laughing at the girl passing out in the mud. Oh my god. Victoria was carried away by servants into the castle and the exe- and the executions continued. Dina was thinking this woman, Fiona Bacon, was definitely her mother. Finally it was near it was near Dina's eighteenth birthday. Now it was a few days before her coronation. She was preparing for the huge celebration by trying on gowns and having a royal tailors and seamstresses take her measurements. Dina was excited. She even she even daydreamed of marrying Wardley soon after the soon after and make him her king. But as she lay in bed a few nights before the date of the coronation, someone slipped into her room. She woke up with a hooded figure standing over her bed. The person told her not to panic, that he knew her and came to warn her. From here, the story makes no sense to me. The figure told her to calm down. He came there to tell her her brother was dead. He says, the king is planning to tell the kingdom that you killed him because you feared that he would take the crown that you so obviously desired. Then he said, it was I who who sent you to Fianna Baker. Do as I say and you might live. I have brought you a bag full of everything you may need. Take it and leave the castle this very minute. He told her that her brother was dead. He told her brother was dead by the king's hand. He told her she must go or she might be dead next. The king would kill her next because he would not share the throne with no one. She asked the figure, how do I know I can trust you? Why should I believe anything you say? The figure er early replied, if you wait too much longer, you won't need to ask. Dina sneaked through the castle past all the guards she assumed were looking for her since the stranger told her she was blamed for her brother's death. She snuck down the hallway to where Charles' room was. Two guards were standing outside the doorway. She threw a piece of metal down another hallway to distract them. They ran looking and searching the other way. Dina had to get to her brother's room one last time to see for herself if the stranger had told her the truth. Was Charles really dead? As she sneaked in and saw the first two caretakers, Lucy and Quintrell lay dead, stabbed to death. She didn't see Charles, but climbed up the stairwell into his balcony. She looked over the balcony, looked down to see his body lay on the ground below, a pool of blood behind his head. She vomited and collapsed on the floor. 
she came to look down again and said a prayer of her brother. Then she searched the room for the crown he made her, but it was gone. Someone took it. As she slipped from his room she, and escaped, for the first time, Dina killed two guards as she overheard them talking about her and Charles, saying they didn't give a rat's ass who sat on a throne. Charles Dina Orbitory and didn't care if Charles lay dead. That's when she snuck up behind them and stabbed both of them to death. As she ran through the courtyard gardens, ducking and hiding, she saw her father, the King of Hearts, marching with his carts and soldiers. She heard him yell to the guards, Find my daughter. Should she try to fight or run, use any force to subdue her. If it means the cost of, of her life, so be it. She is guilty of murdering my son of high treason and of planning the demise of Wonderland. She is a murderous traitor to the, to the realm. I will have her head by nightfall. His faithful sidekick, aide and advisor Cheshire stood at his side grinning. Dina knew it was true. Her father murdered her brother and his ter caretakers, Lucy and Contrell. But the stranger was right. She needed to leave and never return. She ran to the stables where she, where her favorite horse was, and she and found Wart, Wartley. She tells Wartley what happened to her brother and his caretaker. She told him her father killed her brother Charles. Wartley asked in disbelief, "Why would a father kill his own son?" She said, "To blame, blame it on me. My father wants the crown, Wartley. I don't think he ever intended to give it to me." Wartley told her he knew of the orders to kill her or to take her into custody. Wortley gave her a horn hoof, the biggest and strongest horse in the land to, to get away on. He gave her a horn hoof named Mort. He was wide and massive. He was so big she couldn't straddle his back. She had to straddle his, his neck to ride him. She begged Wortley to come with her. He could he said he couldn't, not yet. Someone had to stay behind and protect her servants, Harris and Emily. He told her to head for the twisted wood and hide there. As she fled to freedom towards the Yorky Mountains on the on her father's favorite and largest steed, Mort crashed through the gates of the castle grounds. She looked back and saw a small army of horses emerge. They were led by the King of Hearts on a white on a white horn who his sword was raised above his head and he was screaming Mort's name over and over again with a crazed look on his face. Dina had never seen more anger in him than this terrible moment and she knew he would never again she would never again question whether he had thrown her brother from the window he was full of hatred and fury intent on her death there was no doubt mort was so fast she felt as if she was in flight some moments she glanced back again periodically he had ran her pursuers off their feet. They fell back. Her father was never able to gain on them, even on the other horn who He couldn't catch up with Mort. He, the distance grew between her and the father until she finally saw him turn back. She remembered Wortley told her to go to the Twisted Wood. Mort raced into the Twisted Wood but would not stop running full speed in between the tall, twisted tr trees until finally his front hoof hit a hole that sent him and Dina flying. She went flying towards a small stream of water and Mort tumbling after her. Once hidden, she ate what dried meat and bread the stranger stored in her bag and changed out of her gown into a pair of wool brown pants, a white tunic shirt, a red high top riding boots, and a black hooded cloak. Then she filled her water skin with water from the creek her and Mort settled at. Next, she thought where to travel. From the twisted wood. Past the twisted wood lay the top of the Yorkie Mountain. That was the least safe place for the Princess of Hearts. It was the last place her father would expect her to go. Perhaps that's why Wortley had suggested it. The decision was made. She walked north for hours until she realized she went too far north, so she backtracked. She was dead tired from walking and Mort sensed her exhaustion. He nudged her until she realized he was enticing her to mount him and gladly and she gladly did. Mort was warming up to her. Then they traveled east as Wortley suggested. She fell asleep riding Mort's warm back. Back at the palace, 
the king prepared for the second hunt, along with his advisor, Cheshire, to find Dina. Cheshire assured the king that he find her. The king declares to Cheshire, I will throw her in the towers and forget that she ever was called mine. <laughs> Cheshire grinned in satisfaction. And this is where the book ends. Let's her recover from spade the spade comment. Racist intentions or not, Miss Colleen Oaks did write a fascinating book and I'm already halfway through the sequel to Queen of Hearts. I'm currently reading Blood of Wonderland to find out what happens to Princess Dina in a twisted wood. And I to see if she ever becomes the queen or when she becomes the is crowned the queen in her when her coronation starts. And all I give this book, four out of five stars. Please tune in to my next review of Blood of Wonderland. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe. <laughs>